Launched in early 2020 and marking an end of an era with Apple's partnership with Intel, the 2020 MacBook Air was a respectable upgrade, bringing a more reliable mechanical keyboard and faster processors. However, the 2020 MacBook Air was quickly overshadowed by the M1 MacBook Air that just came out six months later, and it basically embarrassed anyone who decided to buy this MacBook Air back when it was new. However, I am curious though, how well does the 2020 Intel MacBook Air hold up in 2024, and should you get one for yourself? As for the prices for these, for roughly $430, you can find the 2020 Intel MacBook Air with 256GB of storage. And if you are curious how much the M1 MacBook Air costs, for roughly $600, you can pick up one of those. And these prices do change pretty frequently, so I will put links down in the description if you're curious what the current prices currently are. And then moving on to the design, the design on this is a continuance of the redesigned 2018 MacBook Air. It has this really nice wedge shape, which makes it more comfortable to type on in your lap and on a table. It has an improved mechanical keyboard over the 2018 and 2019 MacBook Airs that feels really comfortable to type on and is a huge reliability improvement as well. Originally, Apple had this butterfly keyboard design that was notorious for getting keys stuck, but luckily on this laptop, you do not have to worry about that. It also has Touch ID 2 for easier unlocking. And then on the left-hand side, you have two USB-C ports, and on the right-hand side, you have one headphone jack, and this is a computer too where you will likely need an adapter if you want to connect different accessories like USB accessories or plug it into like an HDMI port for example. So definitely keep that in mind when you're doing your cost analysis. And this computer too, it can come in three different colors, space gray, silver, and rose gold. And then the screen on this is a 2560 by 1600 pixel resolution with 13.3 inches of screen real estate. And the pixel density on the screen, the color accuracy on this, is absolutely amazing for a $400 laptop. Now, it doesn't quite have the P3 wide color gamut that the M1 MacBook Air has. However, it still has this thing called True Tone, which gives you really nice color accuracy in different lighting conditions. So getting an example here, let's say you're indoors and you have like a warmish light behind you. Well, it adjusts the color temperature of the display to match that. It's kind of hard to explain, but basically it makes the colors on this pop and feel a little bit more natural. And then for performance on this laptop, you have a 1.1 gigahertz dual core i3 with eight gigabytes of RAM. And while it doesn't really sound impressive, macOS Sonoma still runs perfectly fine on this machine. Apps still load decently fast and so do web pages. However, I will sometimes notice lag of animations. Uh, to give you an example here, when you open up Launchpad, sometimes the animation where it shows all the apps going into the center, that can get kind of slow at times, but I think that's more an OS issue and very rarely is that going to be a performance issue. As for software support, this is going to get macOS Sequoia coming out in the fall and maybe after that another major macOS update. And after those major macOS updates, it's going to get another three years of security slash support updates after that. So this computer still has a lot of life ahead of it. And then moving into different performance categories here, we first have video editing. And video editing, this performed decently well with 1080p video editing and it seemed to run really smooth with very little to no lag. I even tried doing 4K video editing on this and it also performed decently smooth. However, if you are planning on using this for any type of video editing, I would highly recommend getting an external hard drive just because storage prices for these laptops get pretty steep and you can save a lot of money that way. As for support, I'd say you're gonna get about three to four years of use with Final Cut Pro and with something like Adobe Premiere, you're probably gonna get five to six years. And then photo editing, Photoshop ran decently fine on this. However, it was kind of laggy for moving objects. And I would say compared to the M1 MacBook Air, the M1 MacBook Air runs a lot smoother than what this machine does. And also 250p3 wide color gamut, and you gain a broader spectrum of colors that can be displayed on the screen. I think the M1 MacBook Air is definitely a better option for photo editors. However, Photoshop is definitely still usable in this. And if you use it occasionally, it's not that bad. But if you are a more frequent user, the M1 MacBook Air is the way to go. And for photo editing, I'd say you get about six to seven years on this laptop. And then music production. I am nowhere skilled in the area of music production. However, I did try downloading FL Studio and Serato DJ Pro. And FL Studio seemed to run smoothly, and so did Serato DJ Pro. However, my lack of familiarity with these softwares kind of limited my tasks to very basic tasks. But I did look up the recommended specs and the recommended specs this laptop meets them for most of the software out there. It's definitely, I'd say in the usable category, but it's also not really in like the higher end category. So I would highly recommend if you are thinking about using this for music production, 
to maybe go on the music production forums and try to get recommendations first before you go out and buy one. But if you do plan on using it for music production, I'd say from what I looked up so far, you could probably get up to 10 to 10 years of support with this. And then we have web work slash schoolwork. And this is probably who this laptop is mainly best for. Web pages still load really fast. Applications like Microsoft Office are still gonna be supported for about five more years. Applications like GoodNotes, Notion, all these other apps you're gonna use as a student or in the office are still gonna be supported for at least a few more years. And finally, the typing experience with this mechanical keyboard is really nice too. Gaming was kind of terrible on this. Minecraft would get about 20 to frames per second on default settings and the fans would ramp up. However, these machines are mainly made for work, so I'm not really too concerned about gaming. And then talking about the battery, battery life on this is overall decent. Apple advertised this computer when it was new with 11 hours of wireless web. However, I will say because batteries do age and hold less capacity over time, it is unlikely you're gonna be able to get that much battery life out of this. Uh, my computer right here, I downloaded an application called Coconut Battery, and it said I had 84% battery health. So with that in mind, I did two tests. The first battery test, I had three Safari tabs open, the Notes app open, and Activity Monitor all open at the same time with the computer on medium brightness. And it said that I had 10 hours and 30 minutes remaining when the computer was charged up at 100%. And I repeated that same test with Final Cut Pro open as well. And I wasn't really using Final Cut Pro, but it said I got nine hours and 47 minutes remaining with battery life. So I'd say realistically, you're gonna get about seven to 10 hours of battery life, and it's only gonna depend on your workload, which honestly ain't that bad. But if you do decide at some point you want to replace the battery, it's $159 from Apple. So if you're buying one of these with a low battery health, that is something to keep in mind. And then moving on to our comparison, and this is actually kind of interesting. The 2018, 2019 MacBook Airs, they could be a good option if you want to save some money. However, they're only $50 to $100 less than what you can typically find the 2020 MacBook Air for. And these MacBooks too, they also have the more unreliable butterfly keyboard, and they can only go up to macOS Sonoma and Mac, macOS Sequoia, which is coming out in the fall. So for about $50 to $100 more, I just get the 2020 Intel MacBook Air. And then in our mid-tier range, we have the 2019 13-inch MacBook Pro. And this is the same price, but it has an add touch bar and a quad-core i5. However, it does have a more unreliable butterfly keyboard. So you definitely need to keep that in mind, but the butterfly keyboard in this is a lot more improved compared to the previous versions of the butterfly keyboard. So I don't think it's gonna be really too big of an issue. And then moving up to the higher end of the range, you have the M1 MacBook Air, and this has a vastly improved processor made by Apple, up to 17 hours of battery life instead of 11 hours, better color accuracy on the display, and it's only $150 more. So if you do have that extra money to spend, I would highly, highly recommend just going and getting the M1 MacBook Air for the longevity and what you're getting out of it. I'll have affiliate links down below if you wanna buy one of these MacBooks and anything you purchase on Amazon after clicking one of those affiliate links goes back to supporting the channel, so thank you. I'll leave a playlist up on screen if you wanna check out more MacBook reviews. I'll also put a link to a video for the M1 MacBook Air review. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and goodbye.